Welcome back, everybody. Uh, I hope everybody's having a good week so far. I know it's only Tuesday, but, you know, that means one thing. It's Tackle Tip Tuesday. All right, like I said, it's Tackle Tip Tuesday, and I hope you guys are enjoying these. Uh, I wanted to do a good number of these guys just to get you guys more acquainted with uh, specific baits in my videos because I know a lot of people were saying uh, last season that they wanted me to do more in-depth like how to use stuff while I'm doing it and I promise I'm still working on that and I'm gonna get better because this is what I'm doing for you guys now I film as much as I physically and mentally can deal with I mean this is a lot of work but it's worth it so what I'm gonna do today is well I'm gonna call it out it's the it's a top water day. So, all you guys out there that enjoy throwing big baits for bigger fish on a regular basis, even though I'm addicted to pan fishing, and you guys, obviously, if you've been around for a while, you know that, there's a new bait. Well, it's not necessarily new. It's been around for a while. But uh, this guy right here, you know what that's called? I'm not going to say it right now, but by the end of the video, I'll let you guys know what this is called. Well, no, I won't be a jerk. It's a whopper plopper. If you don't know what it is, oh, if I can get it to focus on that spot, probably not. Uh, River to Sea makes them. This is a 110 uh, bone color. It's a, the bigger, the well, it's not the bigger version, but it's a bigger version. Uh, this is the smaller one. You can see the difference in size. Uh, but I have a few videos that are basically just all Whopper Plopper videos. And that is for one reason and one reason only. They plain work. Uh, I kinda, I'll kind go over a little bit of explanation before I play the video here and talk you guys through what I'm doing in it uh, like I did in the last video because there's some specifics to this thing. Uh, if you kind of look at this thing without the tail on it, like if I just hide the tail here, if you if you bass fish a lot, this looks a lot like this guy, and I can go over this one, you know, next time. This is a Zara Spook, and then this is the plopper. So that is a plug, or, or I think they call them chug baits or whatever. That is one way you can work this thing. The other way is when you look at this as, you know, a spinner or, well, yeah, it's a spinning tail. So if, you've got, if you guys have never used one of these before, this tail spins freely as you're bringing it in. But what it does is it mimics the sound of this guy right here. Uh, this should be a staple in anyone's box. If you don't have one of these, I'm sorry, but you need to get one. This is a hula popper. Uh, Hula skirt, popper. It, I know it's simple and stupid, but it really is one of the best little bass baits for surface crushing that you can get. And then they, they make them on all kinds of sizes. So like, get sidetracked here already, but I like these baits. See how, see how different in size they make them? Uh, very, very versatile bait. But that, that right here, this little spinning tail does that. So this bait right here is like three baits in one. Uh, well, you could even call it like a buzz bait imitator too because it runs across the surface. But let's get into the video and I'm gonna talk you through what you should be doing when you're fishing your whopper ploppers. Right at the boat. <laughs> All right, so let's get started with an important thing right here. Um, yeah, scenery changed. My thing wasn't working downstairs. Um, basically, that first clip you just seen, I'm going to stress, and I'm probably going to repeat myself later on in this video if, if possible because it's a very, very important thing. You need to take your whopper plopper, no matter what you're uh, doing with it and I'll talk about the different ways you can use it but every time you come back to your boat bring it all the way back and that goes for you shore fishermen too don't just like okay so don't just bring it in within like 
10, 15 feet from shore and then just crank it in real quick. Because a lot of people do that. You guys, you're so focused on the next cast that you forget those fish will literally follow it right up to the shoreline. So let's get into the next clip and I'm going to explain what we're doing here. I think that's a northern. Pretty sure that's what that is. Oh! <laughs> Decent bass. Alright, as you guys can see there, if you paid attention to what I was doing with my reel, so I'm not using a bait caster, so my, uh, my gearing difference is probably going to be substantially uh, different compared to somebody who would use like a, a very high gear ratio, uh, you know, bait caster something that you could like for one crank it's like 50 rolls or you know whatever 15 feet or you know what i mean it'd be faster uh but you can obviously see very you know definitively i am cranking the crap out of that thing and i mean just buzz 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 and if you talk to anybody else who fishes whopper ploppers it's called burning it in and you would think that bait moving that quickly across the surface of the water uh, wouldn't work, but that's why I showed you that clip. Uh, basically, it's you know it's real simple. If it's coming in and you're working it properly in the right area, those fish, if they're active, like this was an active day. Um, at the end of this video, I'll I'll put this this actual whole video up there if you guys want to watch it. Uh, it was a great day on the water, and what happened was is I discovered how fast I could move these baits when I was actually bringing them in. So that's tip number one for working the bait is burn it in and you can do that a lot of days when the water is the right temperature i still haven't got it mastered down so i don't know if it's 65 to 70 degrees or if it's got to be 70 degree water temp either way when the fish are active burn that bait in uh let's get to the next clip that was kind of cool i stopped it he, fucking, he hammered it Another one he's barely pinned. <laughs> Still fun. All right, so if you guys are paying attention there, you gotta really watch my rod tip and that, that last scene. If you wanna go back and watch it again, you'll see exactly what I did. So I was kind of burning it in, kind of like the first thing I told you guys to do. Uh, but they hadn't been biting it like that. So what I did is I threw slack. And if you don't know what that means, it's you take your line, you pull it back tight, and you throw it so that the, the line throws towards the bait. So it's buzzing along and then it just stops. So it stops dead, but then when you reel up that slack, if they're there right away, uh, you can set the hook on them. And that's exactly what happened. I threw slack at them. It stopped. As soon as that bait stopped in front of them, it was something different, and they he, he chopped it. And that's the thing is you got to be able to vary your retrieves like that. So with the Whopper Plopper, it's not just burn it in all the time. Um, you can burn it in and then vary it like this, but that's just one of the really good ones that works, I've noticed. So you burn it for a long period of time. So like more than half your cast. And then at some point, if you haven't had a strike already, just throw slack at it and then just start reeling it in again. So you go from burning it to throwing slack at your line to burning it again. And usually it's either when you stop it, they hit it, or as soon as you start burning it back in, they, they see it getting away from them and they come up and hit it. So that's a really good one to pay attention to. Uh, let's see if I got one more here and double check. Just make sure you guys have... All the different ways of working this bait so that you guys are successful with your whopper ploppers okay so in this video that i was using for reference points uh i didn't happen to work the bait this way because i was able to work it faster that day uh like i said um at the end of this video i'll put that at uh, at the very end of this video uh so you guys can see like the whole day and how it goes and uh, there was that that was a two-part day actually and the morning was crazy frog action if you guys are interested in that but one other thing I want to tell you guys and uh, it's a very specific way of working the bait and that is going to be uh, so instead of burning it in or just pausing it 
Uh, if you've ever used a popper like that one I described earlier in the video, what I want you guys to do is reel it so that you can get it popping and then jerk it like two feet. So you get the bait to buzz like two feet and stop and then reel up the slack. Buzz, reel up the slack. Buzz, reel up the slack. So it's a pulse. And uh, when you get good at it, you'll understand how to do that. So a big thing about that is going to be as you're popping it like a popper, it spins. So you want that thing to, to plop over a couple of times. So you try and get it a, an exact distance for the size of the pop, plopper that you want or that you're using. And it, it'll actually allow you guys to you know figure out how far of a distance you know if it's two feet they want you to pop it or it's six inches uh sometimes you can't you move it too much and they won't hit it but if you move it like just enough to get that plopper to go over once or twice and it makes that noise that's when they slam it so i really hope that some of these tips really help you guys get out and use those a lot of people overthink the plopper and some people overwork it so like i was buzzing it a lot that day and you can overwork it by doing that so basically if you're uh just buzzing it all day long and you're not getting any bites it's because you're probably overworking it especially if it's a nice day out and you know usually the fish will strike better on cloudy days as you can see that day wasn't cloudy at all uh but that little breeze all day kept that chop on the water just like a two two and a half inch chop and because of that it broke up the the surface so they were hitting top water all day because of that uh, i'll get more into you know top water specifics if you guys want me to leave those in the comments below if you want me to do more top water videos and like how to fish the different top water baits i have i have like five five to ten different top water baits right now and probably get more because who doesn't love a big blow up but i'm glad you guys stuck around this long i hope you learned something new but obviously if you're not new here you know what's up but if you're new here Please just remember to 